Hi everyone, my name is Declan McLean. Welcome to our very special Friday Forum Live. FFL is our weekly show bringing you exclusive tutorials, artist interviews and industry insight every Friday live from East London. And today we're joined by Ski Open Full to deconstruct what is probably the greatest song in recorded music history. Ray Parker Jr.'s Ghostbusters. <laughs> So today we're going to explain exactly how the Ghostbusters theme song was made using Ableton Live and Push 2. And if you want to learn a lot more about composition, production, mastering, and all that stuff, make sure you check out our diploma courses at pointblackmusicschool.com. And remember, we are I just rem remembered we're wearing these. <laughs> <laughs> we're <laughs> not. completely live, Imagine as you not. can probably tell. <laughs> so get your questions in for a ski. And we'll get to them a bit later on. Ski, how are you feeling? Tired pretty after busting ghosts? Yeah, very, very tired. But, uh, you know, I'm having a little break and I thought yeah. I'd, you know, look at the theme tune. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, which is great. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah. Bit warm, but... Yeah, it is a bit warm, but... Uh, yeah, so what a track. I thought, <laughs> I thought we'd kick off with a few fun <laughs> facts because it's got to be the best way of starting exactly. a broadcast. Uh, I actually really don't know how fun they are, but we can sort of make them fun okay. just by laughing at each one. Okay, so um, the release date... June 1984. Yeah, 1984. Um, please write into uh, Facebook with like how many, how long ago that was, how many years ago? I'm not sure. I'm sure we can yeah. calculate it. Um, record label Arista, as we classic mentioned. Label. Absolutely classic label. Absolutely classic. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. That purple little sunset on the vinyl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As yeah. for their logo. Brilliant. Engineer uh, Steve Halquist. Um, not a guy I'm yep. that familiar with, but I think he worked very closely with Ray Parker Jr. A lot of his work. Um, total sales. Well, I mean, I looked. Yeah. I looked on the internet, and it okay. said uh, over three million. Which is quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So and it's probably still it's selling as well. Yeah. Um, so the instrumentation, uh, Ray Parker Jr. played everything. That is impressive. Which is pretty amazing. Was that, was that because he was so late with his commission, or was it because he's just a great instrumentalist? It was a classic kind of up all night scenario. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and another classic one, you know, like looking for the title. You know, the title couldn't think what it was going to be, and then you know got some inspiration of like. Um, the name of the film. The name of the film, <laughs> yeah, hang on a minute, that's not right, is it? But anyway, just, you know, make up the rest. Um, and then the classic one, um, slightly weird, he, had a, he, he was 28 at the time and had a 17-year-old girlfriend, nothing wrong with that, um, sure. but got his, his girlfriend's mates, high school friends, to come in and do the backing vocals. So that big kind of, go, it's like, yeah. you know, all our mates. Oh, right, cool. Yeah. So um, there's actually a link here, uh, Mix Online, uh, you can check it out. 32 years ago, someone just said, by the way. Okay, 32. good. You did the math. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. So, um, now what was famous about this track was there was a lawsuit, uh, and it was by Harry, Lu yeah, Harry, Harry Lewis, Huey Lewis in the News, um, who were initially, uh, well, they wanted to use the track, I Want, I want a New Drug, mm. and uh, he turned it down, didn't, he didn't want it used. Oh. Um, so, and it's the Ray Parker Jr.'s track sounds remarkably like Huey Lewis's track. Shall we have a listen? Let's. I've done a bit of a mashup. So, first of all, let's listen to the Huey Lewis and the News track. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no denying. Really. Yeah. Hey, that's it. Yeah. You put that in. I put it in, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a mashup. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's pretty blatant, in fairness. Yeah, it is, it is. And it was settled out, of course. Especially considering he was asked to do it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, uh, Fair enough. little picture of Ray Park Jr. in his studio with his MCI console. I'm pretty sure that's where it all would have happened, the magic would have happened. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the instrumentation. So the drums, uh, the classic Lin drum machine. It seems yeah. like kind of every deconstruction I've done for the, <laughs> the last half a year has been using a Lin drum. But no bad thing at no all. No bad thing at all. Um, and, uh, and then the classic Simmons, Simmons kit, those yeah. toms, uh, brilliant sound. And this was the SDS5 brain. Mm -hmm. um, and then the keyboards, um, apparently used a Jupiter 6, Roland Jupiter 6 for the bass line. Uh, and a Chord Poly 61 for all the other parts. So, um, yeah, and I think we should now just look at recreating the track. Let's do it. What do you reckon? I think we should. Okay, so we've got um, Ableton Live here and Push 2, the complete control and a skull here is going to help me mm -hmm. out. Um, so uh, I think what, what we do, we'll start off just, do, just by doing the intro and then we'll kind of get into the different sections. We're going to concentrate on four different sections here. So let's just uh, bring up my little... Keyboard, there we go. 
Uh, I'll say for the moment we're in we're in B, okay? okay. Uh, but then we'll get a bit more into the theory of it. So uh, let's just record this in, shall we? There we go. Yes. So familiar. Exactly. What synth is that you're using? Okay, so I've made this. Um, I've actually got a chain here. Uh, let's just have a look. Uh, so I've got two M1s. Um, one is playing this kind of harp sound, and then the other one is playing a string sound. And then this one here is an analog. Yes. Um, and I've just used the key grouping here to split it across the keyboard. Which is, uh, is, I don't know, it's, it's something that is. Um, and then. Some brilliant Simmons sounds as well. Uh, so what we're going to do with this is just put in this part here, which is just, and I'm using a new feature of push, a relatively new pe feature of push, which is the um, velocity pads. So if you you know press the layout button here, you can just go between the different layouts, and this is the 16 velocities. So it just gives you 16 velocities spread across uh, these pads. So um, so let's just put that in. Go. Uh, almost a perfect look at that. Yeah, let's have a look at it. Should we just get rid of ramp? Let's just yeah. get rid of this. There we go. I uh, oh, can't see where they are, but uh, those sounds are there. Normally it gives you a little uh, bar to scroll down, but uh, let's just see if I can do it. There we go. Oh, yeah. There they are. So. Um, and I've actually put in um, a minimum, minimum velocity uh, on this as well, but uh, yeah. So that's the, that's the first section. Um, let's get into the nuts and bolts. So let's look at the, the next section now. So um, we're going to start off with the drums. Always a good place to start. So I've got the accent on here. So let's put in this pattern uh, now. Here we go. There we go. And get rid of the metronome now. Do the hi hat. Cool. So this um, this that sort of forms the the basis for the three different patterns because there are actually three different mm -hmm. patterns here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that twice. Try again. That's not having it, is it? Let's just put that down there. There we go. And let's just close that. Okay, so let's just go back to this one. And there's a bit here we're going to put in. Yeah. Gotta love it. Gotta love those Simmons. Just Apologetically, eighties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Um, so the the next the next section is just those kind of th that, those cowbells and the symbols yep. uh, taken out. Uh, but let's just do the final section now, which is slightly different. Okay. Let's put this in. Here we go. There we go, and then let's duplicate that. Uh, cool, so we've got our different sections now. Um, so the next thing to look at, oh, let's just put a crash in. We need a crash, every track needs a crash. Yes, of course. There we go, so let's just put this in. Uh, 
And let's just go on to the clip and just make the loop length uh, eight bars. There we go. So um, let's go back to the device. And one of the great things about um, push now as well push two is the duplicate function. So you can easily copy clips over. It wasn't something you could do with push yep. one. So that uh, makes it really handy. And there's one other important thing as well, which is this riser sound, which uh, let's just go back here. So let's just put that at the end here. Okay. There we go. Yes. Clip. That one Cool, so we're getting there. Let's move on to some music, shall we? Um, so, yeah, I'm, at this point, I'm going to bring up the uh, chords and uh, let's just go to a piano sound. So, we can just talk a little bit about uh, the sounds that we've got here. Okay, so the track is in B, um, but it actually swaps between a major and minor feel. So, the verse. Uh, and the kind of main melody sections are, I've got a major feel. This is the standard scale of B major, it's got five sharps. Um, and then the other sections, uh, I don't really call them bridge or middle or whatever, they go to more of a minor sound, which is the B Dorian. So, um, but it's not quite as simple as that because uh, the actual, even though it's major, it's actually using the B Mixolydian mode, um, which is these notes here. So rather than playing this A sharp here, it's, that's flattened, and uh, we play an A natural instead. And we it kind of gives us this feel here. Very jazzy. Very jazzy, yeah, exactly. Um, if we want to build, if we want to look at the, what the Mixolydian mode is, um, it's actually if we play the scale of E major, but we start the scale of E major, but on the fifth degree on the B, we get the Mixolydian mode. Oh, right, okay. Sometimes called the dominant seventh mode because it's got that chord there, which is the B B seven, um, and then it goes to well, the other section goes to the B Dorian mode. So that's the standard B minor, but the with the Dorian we actually sharpen the six. So again, it's got quite a kind of jazzy jazzy sound. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, so there we go, there, that's, that's kind of what we're doing here. So let's start off um, just putting the bass line in uh, for the first section, the main section. So I've got a bass here. I'm just using an analog here. It's a classic sound, I've adapted a bit, I've used it on loads of tracks. Um, so, so let's put it in. So we're getting there. Right. <laughs> now for the chords. Now the chords. Um, now this is this is where uh, it's really getting interesting. And uh, I've used uh, my favourite favourite synth, favourite plugin mm -hmm. actually, which we, we did a plugin yeah, we, week, didn't we? We talk about this one a lot. Yeah. Um, Tal. Tal. The old Tal. Juno 60. Classic saw wave synth, yeah. 80s synth sound. I can't resist playing. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was just thinking about. <laughs> yeah, um, beautiful sound. But it's uh, even though originally this was a Poly 61, uh, I haven't got a Poly 61. I think Same there are there is a plugin I found, but it's for PC only, which okay. is a bit, a bit disappointing. Um, so I've got something that sounds pretty similar, and actually yeah. you, I'm using this for uh, quite a few of the sounds for this. So uh, the chords here. We've got, so we're in B, and we've got the first chord, which is an A, A major, but it's the first inversion, and then it goes to an E major. So, e, so A major to E major, pretty simple. Um, and then it's a slight variation where um, I actually add a note here for the, for the last two, two bars, I think it is, two bars round. So let's put that in. There we go. 
guy. Sounding pretty good. It's getting there, isn't it? Okay. Um, now we're going to go to the lead sound. Again, this is the, uh, the good old towel. Um, and uh, let's just take this down for a second. It's really annoying, isn't it? It keeps going off there. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've actually done with this is uh, I've used the chord device um, and I've added uh, a note that's an octave down. So that's it without it. And then great, very, very adaptable. The other thing I've done is that I wanted to put some uh, modulation, some sort of vibrato or uh, LFO. So, and I've used this by using my nano control here, which is in CC mode. And uh, because there's no actual sort of modulation wheel on this, uh, it's like a, a momentary kind of latch thing mm. here. So I don't know if you can see that, but as I'm touching that, it's... I think it was the same engaging. in the original 60, wasn't it? It was yeah. like a cream button. That's right, yeah. yeah. Press um, it. But I've also mapped the actual amount as well, so... You can increase that over time, yeah. yeah. And it's a classic, I mean, it's a classic sort of funk sound, yeah. isn't it, you know, so... Um, but it doesn't actually, that, that, that LFO doesn't really se um, feature in this first section. Um, but it does in the, in the, in the next one. So, um, this is quite hard to play because it's got this... I'm going to play the 16th, so... Uh, Bear with me. Yeah. Here we go. That's good. There we go. Never in doubt. One take wonder again. Okay, we're getting into it now. I'm starting to get quite excited. Are you? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Good. All right. Um, so <laughs> what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to copy down the bass and the chord. There we go. So this is where the verse comes yeah. in. Um, I have actually got an a cappella, but I think we'll okay. put that in at the yeah, end. Yeah, let's actually. wait for the end, a big reveal. Yeah, exactly, a big reveal. Um, so let's look at the, uh, the next section now. Um, so this is where it gets kind of a bit more minory using mm. the Dorian. Uh, Dorian, so let's just... Well, the kind of bridgey bit. Yeah. yeah. I like that bit. So should let's put that in. Cool. Um, <coughs> and then we have this this sound again. And this is where this comes the in. Infamous riff. Yeah. Can't really see it. It's a bit hard to play when it's there, so I'm just going to put it on my lap. But uh, uh, let's put that section in. Um, and then it comes in with a string part here for the second half, so let's put that in. Just to lift it up a little bit. Cool, so at that point then it goes back to the... We've now got our two main sections. So let's move to the last section. Um, we're going to go back to the bass. Um, it's quite a lot going in this section. So yeah. um, let's build it up. Let's start off with the bass. Um, let's put it in now. So that's Sounds nice. good. The filter envelope is such a big part of that bass sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that funk D-train style mini yeah. kind of sound. 
Um, <coughs> obviously set to mono as well, mono mode. That kind of has a big effect on the sound. Yeah. Um, cool. Now this is this is the bit where I've actually got to read music. There we go. I've got it written down, scored. Um, it's just it's not because it's a particularly different par, but it's just like it, it's a it's a four bar phrase, and each it's an arpeggio, uh, and each each bar is slightly different to, to the to the other one. So just just to make sure, just so I can be as authentic as possible, yes. I'm going <laughs> to actually use it. Always authentic enough. <laughs> Yeah. Um, this is a ghostly tone to it, if you don't mind me saying. This sound? Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's why they it's chose it. It's another towel. I just love it. Yeah. I just want to say, I mean, I think that with, with these synths, it's so, it's so easy just to kind of load them up and just go start going through the presets. And you can often, it can sometimes actually put you off mm. using a synth. Whereas this is like, I'd really just like going to like the in initial patch and just start to sort of create the sounds myself, you know, um, which is what I did for these ones. So here we go, let's just uh, see if we can get this in first take. <laughs> yes, I made yes, it. Mate, of course. Yeah, you don't want to record again, what am I doing? Okay. There we go. Um, and then for the final sound here, again, it's another towel. Uh, let me play this to you. And um, this again, we're using the LFO on this. Let's just bring it up. Uh, oops. Here we are, just finding it again. So I've just got the LFO on constantly here. That's without it. And this is affecting the pitch. So you can be as extreme as you want with that sound. Uh, so here we go. Um, so let's put that in. So there we go. We've got the three main sections there, or four main sections really. And uh, yeah, we mentioned it before, but I've got an a cappella. Yes. So let's uh, put it in. I'm just going to drag drag them over here. I've just labelled them um, to make sure I get this right. Let's put that one there. So we put in some guitar there. first. Or do you want to do this bit first, and then we'll do some guitar later? I think we should put this in just so we can listen to it, and then maybe do some guitar. I mean, guitar would be fantastic. Singing is very popular. Not sure there's anyone here who can do it, but we'll, we'll see. Okay, well let's you know maybe put a call in somewhere and yeah. see. Yeah. On the who are we going to call? On the I don't know exactly. Maybe the Ghostbusters <laughs> didn't didn't even get it. Let's move on. I did in the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, let's get rid of this keyboard. We don't we don't want to know about any notes anymore, do we? Um, okay, so check this out. Something strange. Oh yeah. In your neighborhood. Off YouTube. Who you gonna call? So, so let's just go from diff through the different sections now. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. You don't want that one. Don't know how that one snuck in there. Definitely missing the guitar. I think Feel here, like definitely. Guitar shake all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. How can we fill it? Can we get a guitar suit? Yeah. I think we have one in the room. Really? Very, very slowly floating his way over here. What is a guitar? It happens to be a guitar. Oh, there's a guitar as oh well. Oh my god! As well as a guitarist. <laughs> it's Slimer! <laughs> From the Ghostbusters franchise. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Slimer! Oh, Slimer, how's it going? How are you doing? You wow. You can't talk, Slimer. Would you fancy ghost. doing a bit of guitar? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Um, you got a sound. That sounds so killer. Shall I, um, shall I just play the first section? Should we do the first section? Yeah, 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 here we go. I'll just play the it. The main riff, yeah? Huh? The main riff. The main riff, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Nothing strange in your neighborhood. Can I record that? Okay, 
you guys. So great, we're gonna leave it going. Okay, here we go. That was fantastic. Wow, you've really nailed this, haven't you? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Many years of uh, being so in the what's film. The next guitar part? Okay. This whole chestnut. Can I record that? Here we go. Whoa, that's so hot. Almost <laughs> as hot as it is in the room. Um, okay, so the last section. Okay, I'm gonna keep playing, I'm gonna record you. Put it there. That was just hey. fantastic. <laughs> Amazing job. Woo! Yay! Brilliant. Uh, and we've got the old guitar rig for that as well, which, um, yeah, it's yeah, just. Simple right pedal, yeah. very 80s. Brilliant. Thank you, Slimer. Okay. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't bust him skiing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard about your job. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. It sounds I was just thinking good. it gives it that, I was going to say human, but obviously he's a ghost, but yeah. it gives it that kind of like organic yes. feel yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's such a quantized syncopated riff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So having that guitarist in the background. Exactly. Should we have another little listen to uh, the amazing work? <laughs> section. We could, yeah. we probably will when we finish, but before we do that, <laughs> yes. we've got some questions for you, Steve. Okay. In, in between all the laughing, which yeah. I don't know why that's happening, yeah. uh, Ron is asking, is it difficult to recreate that Uno sound in Ableton with the built-in instruments? Is it possible? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, it's, there's nothing complex about the, uh, the Tal Uno. Um, so, you know, subtractive synth, you've got, you've got the kind of, you know, the sub, sub bass, you've got all the same waveforms. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, I just kind of wanted to do something different, but I could have done it, you know, I could have, could have used the analog. I mean, I love analog. That's, yeah. that's um, when I was talking before about not going through presets and uh, designing sounds yourself, it's like, that's sort of what I generally do with analog. You know, I might have a kind of starting point, but, you know, when you sort of get to know, navigate uh, the kind of the architecture of the synth, then it's quite easy to kind of recreate yeah. and get the sound you want. Of yeah. course. Khovsep Achyan is asking, can you show us the bass synth, please? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So let's just... Uh... If you've got any more questions, keep them coming in. Ski will do his best to answer. Yeah. Okay, so we've got two oscillators here. I've called this Chicago type bass just because I sort of did a track about three years ago. That Mr. Had that Fingers in. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so both both saw waves. Um, one is an octave below the other. 
And um, one, the second oscillator is slightly detuned as well. So you do get that sort of slightly, slightly kind of phasey, chorusy sound. Um, then we just look at the uh, here the filter, filter envelope. So this is obviously we mentioned you mentioned it before. It's quite an important yeah. part of it. So I've got this um, envelope. Uh, setting here set quite high so this envelope this is how much the envelope is actually affecting the filter cutoff so if we bring it right down and you could say I could give that a bit more resonance I love analog though it's great it's, it's really I hate to use the word but it's a very kind of fat device yeah. you know it sounds really, really yeah, good. for sure yeah. So it's pretty straightforward, really, to us, though. Yeah. Nice one. Uh, we got a question from uh, Q Elant. He's asking, if you use the drum racks to load your sounds, can you stem them out in a manner that battery does the separate audio tracks instead of the way that Ableton falls them into the group channel? Um, good question. Uh, I suppose, I mean, you could, is he talking about in automatically or, or actually? I guess you want to route them out into individual audio channels. Yeah. I'm not sure why. I suppose the thing I would do uh, is is actually just kind of solo each solo each track. Um, yeah, I ended up kind of sampling these, but yeah, I suppose you would just kind of. Um, oops, let's just see where. Uh, yes, because I've actually, I'm actually got, I'm actually playing battery from a drum rack, so I'd actually have to kind of go into the individual sounds and then just solo them. But yeah, it's an interesting topic, st creating stems, because in both yeah. Logic and Ableton there is a sort of automated way of doing it. But if I'm if I'm really doing it, if I really want to be careful, then I'll probably just go through sound by sound and just yep. do it by soloing, just making sure that all the right effects there and they've got a good level and everything. Discord is asking, what's your favourite song from the era? I assume it means the 80s. Um, oh my god. <laughs> Ghostbusters. <Take your> time. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yeah. um, how many signs are bundled into the Ableton default synth? So asks Tomic Jasansky. Uh, how many presets do you get with it with analog? With analog? Um, loads. Uh, yeah. we, we, can, we can have a look here. There we go. So you've got a whole range, you know, for all, all kind of uh, categorized into their own kind of categor categorization, so you know, bass, brass. So, um, yeah, if you're when you're putting your own presets, uh, you, ha you have to sort of make sure that you use these same categories when you're describing the sound that you're, you're putting in, just so it shows up and it comes up, up in, yeah. uh, in push. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know what the exact amount is, but uh, there's there are loads. Yeah, maybe we've got time for maybe one or two more questions. Oh, really? Oh. Okay. Okay. There you I don't, go. We don't usually have lighters in film studios for no. obvious reasons. No. <laughs> smoking. And yeah. And no smoking. Yeah. I mean, he's already dead, so. Yeah. He can smoke all he wants. Uh, Kuntunde Joe's is asking if you're going to recreate the guitar part electronically, how would you do it? Um, electronically, well, I would, I would use the, the a guitar sound. Um, I won't do it now because uh, yeah. it might take a bit a, a while. But um, yeah, I actually sort of did that with uh, the the uh, Ocean Drive Duke Jamont. Yes, which you can watch on our YouTube channel. Which you can watch on YouTube. Yeah, youtube.com forward slash point point music. It's I cool. used I used um, one just one, one of the guitar sounds from the standard packs, downloadable packs, yeah. and just processed it, and uh, it's actually pretty reasonable. So yeah. Yeah, cool. But so obviously, you can't beat a Slimer playing guitar. Yes. Yeah. Hard to come by, but mm. they can rock out. Uh, and one more question from, uh, actually, can't even see who it was from. Sorry about that. But it's something, what is it on your master channel, if anything? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. No? There you go. Yeah. Uh, that was Darren Bradnick, by the way. OK. So yeah, we done here? Um, well, yeah, but I just want to say, Declan, it's your last day here, it is point blank. It is my last day, yes. And last SFL, last day. I'm completely gutted, you know. Oh, it's, it's just not going to be the same. It won't be the same. We used to do it. I'm, I'm sure if you guys watch this channel a lot, you'll know Ski from our amazing deconstruction videos and FFLs. It's always fun. 
But you'll know Declan as the face, the face of the <laughs> There's of the probably going to be channel. less Lindrums from now on. Yeah. <laughs> as I, can't, I have to hold my hand up, that was my influence. But yeah, it's just a little something from us, oh, you know, wow. just to say thanks so <laughs> much. I know. Oh, um, amazing. Um, Whoa. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. guys. I won't open this now. Yeah, but please come back and visit and come and deconstruct one of your own tracks. Yes. You know, your stuff is incredible. So please, please come oh, back. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, as Key said, that is it for today's FFL. And it is my last one too. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoyed the control tour. Shout out to Richie and the guys. And of course, all the FFLs and all your guys' amazing questions, many of which were about my hair. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is my last, yeah, as I said, this is my last FFL. Someone will be back next week with another FFL, probably not me. But it's goodbye, goodbye from me for the last time and uh, goodbye from Ski as well. Yeah. See ya.